I'm John Fish, a Harvard sophomore, and in April, I'm going to be vlogging my life. So today is April 1st, and, and the way that this vlog is kind of going to work uh, is I was thinking I was going to vlog every day, but then I realized that's kind of impossible for me with school and with everything going on. Uh, so instead, I'm going to be vlogging three days a week. So I'm going to vlog Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to edit and upload on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Uh, I, I film the segments in my room on this big camera here, uh, and, and the, the segments kind of throughout the day, ooh, not good lighting there, uh, on this camera here, this, this smaller camera that you can see. Um, and then in terms of the format of the vlog, yeah, day in the life stuff uh, with some segments that I have planned here and there. I've shot some intros for them and I think they're pretty cool. So like I said, today is April 1st, um, so let's kind of go over the plan for the day. So for those of you familiar with me already, you'll know that I do uh, my daily planning and my growth book, which I also sell on Amazon. Um, and yeah, so the plan for today. Uh, so this morning, wake up and get ready, 8.30, meditate, those are both done, read breakfast and vlog, that's what we're up to now. I've got my film class, computer science class, lunch, do some work, vlog, gotta work out for a few hours, uh, and then just do some school work, I have a lot to do right now, uh, and then get to bed at a reasonable hour so that I can get nine hours. Lots on the to-do list, lots of papers, and just one piece set, so goals, meditate in the morning, that's actually already finished, so I can check that one off. Uh, I want to go on my phone less than 90 minutes. It's an effort that I've been making recently to kind of just like use my phone less. Uh, I made some videos about that too. Shoot an awesome vlog, of course. That's a major goal. Uh, get nine hours of sleep. And then finally, the book that I'm reading right now, uh, Moral Tries by Joshua Green, which is a fantastic book, by the way. The plan is to finish that today. That's one of the goals. Anyways, I'm going to do some reading and grab some breakfast uh, and then go to class. And uh, yeah, I'll be uh, taking you along with me. Breakfast time. So I wrapped up computer science just there and that, that ends my classes for the day. I'm gonna grab some lunch now and then do some work, but uh, before I do, I kinda wanna introduce a new segment of the vlog, so here we go. Alright, welcome to the portion of the vlog called CS Corner. Now, if you're unfamiliar, CS, computer science, I'm a computer science student, uh, and my goal with this portion is just to kind of share with you in little kind of bite-sized chunks, little facts or tidbits about computer science. So if you're not familiar, this is going to be really useful. If you are familiar with computer science, it's going to be less useful, but it's only a short period anyways. So, Today we're going to start off by talking about a concept called a graph in computer science. So you're probably familiar with, you know, um, a graph in terms of math, right? A way of picturing things, and that's exactly what a graph in computer science is. It's a way of picturing data, but it's a little bit different than that. So there's really two components to a graph, right? You've got nodes and you've got edges. So nodes are kind of the, the fundamental pieces of information. So um, for example, if you're building a graph of cities, uh, each city will be a node. So uh, you might have a, a node for Toronto, a node for Boston, etc. And then the edges kind of represent paths. So they're uh, connections between those nodes. So Boston and Toronto might be connected by a path that has a certain length, right? That's how long it takes to get. Them. So when we're drawing these types of graphs, we can draw these nodes as circles and these edges as lines connecting those circles. Sometimes those edges are going to be what we call directed in that you can go from say Toronto to Boston, one node to the other, but not the other way around. Or uh, it could go both ways, or you can have undirected graphs where all of the edges go both ways. So there's various ways of doing this. And the cool thing about 
about graphs is that you get these kind of interesting problems that come out of them. So one uh, famous problem is called the traveling salesperson problem. So the idea behind this problem is you have a bunch of nodes and uh, you have edges that represent the distance between those nodes. Um, so every node has some distance to, to every other node. Um, and then the question is, uh, what is the path that connects all of the nodes that is the shortest path, right? If you're a traveling salesperson and the nodes are the houses, what is the shortest path such that you can hit all of the houses. And it turns out that this problem, although it's pretty easy to understand, is what we know as NP hard, meaning it can't be solved in polynomial time, which is kind of interesting. It means that uh, the only solutions to this problem for very large N um, are going to take a really long time. Lots of cool research on it. Uh, if you're interested in that stuff, do some Googling about it. Traveling salesperson problem. And that concludes CS Corner. <music>I made it back to the room uh, and so to kind of check in where we're at uh, kind of in our day um, so done the morning done all my classes we're at this portion now where I've got a little bit of time we've got about an hour before I have to go work out for a few hours um, and so it's time to start crossing things off the to-do list right so I've got two papers I need to write in the next three days which is manageable uh, but I'm gonna have to get cracking on that so I'm gonna start doing that right now uh, which is not very exciting stuff and then I'm not allowed to, to film stuff with my workout um, so the next time you're really going to see me is at an after dinner. Um, but in the meantime, I think it's a good, uh, good time to introduce another segment of the vlog that I've planned. So let's do that. All right. And, uh, that concludes the lesson. Any questions? Oh, me, me. Anyone? Any questions? I have a question. Me. Anyone? Me. Me. Okay. Go for it, John. Okay, okay, great. Well Welcome to Q&A, the portion of the vlog where you ask me questions and I give answers. Now, the way that this kind of works is uh, every time I'm vlogging, I'm going to be putting out a story on Instagram uh, asking you to ask me questions. So my Instagram is at thejohnfish if you have any questions. Uh, and you send in videos or, or messages uh, asking what questions you have. So I'm going to try and get through one or two questions every vlog just because I feel like I get asked a lot of questions and sometimes it's hard to answer them all and a lot of them overlap. So. The question for today comes from a viewer named Alfonso from Brazil. What's up, John? How are you doing? I love your job. My name is Alfonso. I'm from Brazil. And I'd love to know, how do you deal with failure? How do you overcome it? You know, and that's it. Thank you. All right, so this question here has to do with failure. Um, and I think this is a really important question because I got really lucky in grade, grade five and six. I had a teacher called Ms. Reese who taught me to accept and to embrace failure. Um, and I don't think that that's something that, that everyone has. I think failure is something that a lot of people are really scared of. And I guess rightfully, like it's a, it's a scary sounding word. The way that I see it, you kind of have two options for dealing with failure, right? So the first option is really to, to kind of get really in your head and let this, this negative rhetoric really dominate the experience. So, you know, you didn't get into the school that you wanted. Oh man, I suck, I'm a failure, I'm the worst, I can't believe this. Oh, look at him, he got in, I'm so much worse than him. In doing so, what do you get from that? Nothing, right? You, you make that experience worse. The failure, it sucks, right? But what really sucks is what happens after, when you're talking down and you're, and you're beating yourself up all this time. I think in order, to, in order to grow from failure, you have to kind of embrace it as, yeah, that sucked, but like, what can we get from that, right? Because reminiscing on it is only gonna make it worse. So it's kind of this weird balance where you, you have to recognize these negative thoughts that are gonna come into your mind. You have to kind of note them, acknowledge them, and then replace them with positive thoughts. So you have to be like, man, like I really want to get in that school. And it's not about, you know, getting rid of that disappointment. That disappointment's gonna be there. It's about harnessing that and moving it into something positive, right? So you have this energy, which is like, man, I really want to get in this school and I didn't, and that sucks. And I failed at that, right? And you acknowledge that and then you go, okay, what do I learn from this, right? What, where can I move from here? And you take that energy that you were gonna use to beat yourself up and instead you kind of take it easy on yourself. You're like, it's fine, you, you know, I still believe in you. Let's make something new happen. Let's make something different happen. And you go and you pour that into, you know, a sport, an extracurricular, a hobby, something else, right? You, you just jump into something with that energy and you translate that energy and, and the lessons that you learn from that hurt of failure, 
into something which will result in future success. It's about becoming a resilient or an anti-fragile person. Um, so that book, uh, Anti-Fragile, uh, amazing. I definitely recommend it. Uh, it's a great book for understanding kind of how to deal with failure and how to become stronger and more resilient as a result of that. Another good book for this is Man's Search for Meaning. So Alfonso, thanks for your question. I think it's a really important one. I could talk about it for a long time, uh, but the point of Q&A is it's supposed to be short. So that's the question for today. Let's get back to the book. <laughs> back from dinner. Uh, and to be honest, I'm tired. I, this is kind of the point of the day, right? Where every day you kind of get back from dinner and it's like, you kind of have to <laughs> make the decision, you know, how much time am I going to relax versus get to work? And then that's going to influence when you get to bed as well. It's a tough thing to balance, right? Because you need rest, obviously you need to take some time to relax. Um, but if you take too much of that time, then your work time ends up eating into your sleep time and then it all kind of falls apart because you're more tired the next day and then and so on so i'm gonna relax for a little bit uh, i've got about 30 pages left in my book so i'm just gonna read that kind of chill out um and then get to work so right now it's about 7 45 p.m uh, so maybe you know read for i don't know 45 minutes around 8 30 get to doing some work just been kind of in here grinding out this essay. I think it's a good idea to, to end the video where we started it with uh, kind of going over the plan, seeing what worked and what didn't. So uh, in terms of the schedule, yeah, everything everything happened. In terms of goals, so if you remember from the start of the video, uh, I had five goals, right? I wanted to meditate in the morning, which I did. Um, I wanted to go on my phone less than 90 minutes, which I did, although just barely. Um, I wanted to uh, shoot an awesome vlog, which I think I did, I hope I did, but I won't really know that until I edit, but like, it was a lot of fun to shoot. Um, and I think that's what, what matters more for me right now. So yeah, that goal was achieved. Set myself up for nine hours of sleep. Definitely doing that right now. It's like 10, 15 right now, I think. Um, and I'm just kind of getting wiped, like I'm not being very productive. So at this point, it's kind of just go to bed, wake up relatively early tomorrow so you can do work more efficiently, right? Just kind of recognizing that if I keep working now, it's just a waste of time. So. Nine hours of sleep, we're setting ourselves up for that well and finished the book, which I did. So yeah, goals were achieved today. Um, and yeah, I'd say, you know, it's a great day. Anyways, that concludes uh, season zero, episode zero of the vlog. The reason I'm counting from zero, by the way, uh, there's kind of two parts of that. One, this is a bit of an experimental season to see what I want to do in the future. It's only one month long versus what I kind of see being maybe two, three month long seasons of content if this works out well. And obviously you have to start counting from zero because in computer science you have to count from zero. So anyways. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at the John Fish. You can also leave a comment down below, leave a like or a dislike to let me know what you thought about the video. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like the vlog that I'm going to be shooting on Wednesday, April 3rd, uh, and you know, the 10 vlogs after that throughout the month of April, um, then please do consider subscribing. Uh, it does mean a lot to me. It helps me a lot. Um, and if you really want to support the channel, uh, you can find the growth book on Amazon link in the description. Uh, it helps me a lot. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will uh, see you in a few days. Oh.